Okay, everybody, here we have a, um, I think a 91 or a 92 PRS EG. This is pre factory for all you people that care about that kind of stuff. I don't know how much difference it really makes, but the message boards, you know, have huge World War III's about it all the time, so I just thought I'd point that out. Okay, um, as you guys probably know, um, Paul Reed Smith worked closely with Lindy Fralin in designing pickups for the EG series, which were made in the early 90s, again before the factory. Um, there was a Series 1 and a Series 2, and they had all different kinds of pickup uh, configurations. This is a Series 1 guitar. You can tell by the um, flat kind of strap bottom of the guitar um, and the kind of Ernie Ball Music Man bevels uh, contours on the horns. Um, the Series 2 EGs look like the, the modern traditional PRS body shape. Um, so, this guitar was from, I don't know if you can see this, but it says, To My Friend Lindy from Paul Reed Smith. Turn it back this way a little bit, Will. I don't know if you can really see this. Hopefully I'll be able to photograph this. But, um, <clears throat> Paul had Lindy design the pickups for it. If you flip it back over, um, the EG Series 2 had these zero hum single coils, which most guys refer to as Fralin dominoes. Um, so what we have here is a Series 2 pick guard jammed into a Series 1 body, and you can see it's kind of ill-fitting. There's a little gap right there, and it hangs off the edge of the guitar because it wasn't meant to fit on this body. But this guitar basically went back and forth between Lindy's shop um, in Virginia and Paul's shop in Maryland before the factory, um, probably eight or nine times over a period of four or five years, with Lindy constantly um, just uh, rewinding the pickups and, and giving some test mark at different outputs. When they stopped making the EG Series 2s, and I think 94, 95, somewhere in there, uh, Paul just told Lindy to keep this guitar, and he wrote that on the back, the, to my friend Lindy, Paul Reed Smith. So this was Lindy's personal guitar that he had, um, and uh, he basically just said, you know, I'm not a big fan of the neck profile. If you noticed on Lindy's website, he actually has an all-parts made neck with a profile that he likes, which is a skinny 1 and 5 8 nut width, and a deep kind of vintage fender C shape, more of a baseball neck. Now this neck has a wide, it's kind of like a wide thin, I don't know if it's exactly the same carve, but it's definitely a 1 and 11 16 nut width and a shallower C neck profile. So he said it just doesn't feel right in my hands. So he uh, parted ways with it and I got it. And uh, so we're going to play it for you. Now the difference in these zero hums um, and the original zero hums are pretty much every set of zero hums you can find is they were all wound to kind of mimic a strat pickup as far as output and just be quiet. These were custom wound to be higher output and so they are the only set in existence. So I um, feel very blessed that I had the opportunity to purchase this guitar from Lindy. Um, and uh, basically talked to him on the phone for about 45 minutes and he told me all about the story so I'm trying to relay all that information to you guys. Um, I've got a sticker for my Lothiel Luthier, local Luthier, <laughs> getting tongue-tied, Craig Landau, who does awesome work. If you're anywhere within three hours of Charlotte, take your stuff to him. If he can't fix it, it can't be fixed, and if he can't make it play better, then it's just, it's all it can do. So, uh, Lindy, at one point, um, after they stopped making the EGs and Paul gave this to him, he installed, like, a, um, some sort of B-bender, funky bridge, um, and uh, so there's two big, there's two kind of screw holes under here, so I just put the sticker on to cover that up. But anyway, um, this guitar has lots of nicks and dings. It's basically been, as Lindy said, just knocking around the shop for the past decade because he, he didn't really play it. Um, but uh, it's got the original Milcom one-piece trim, which go for anywhere from $350 to $400 if you can find the original ones. Uh, it's got the original PRS locking tuners. Um, with the little wing collars. So, sorry, I just like burped right in Will, the guitar player's face. So, that was his reaction. Sorry about that. So, anyway, uh, it's a pretty cool guitar. A little bit of um, PRS and, and Lindy Fralin pickups history. And so, we're going to give you a run through. I'm playing it through a, um, a solid state Roland Cube 30X, which you're probably saying, why in the world are you playing this guitar through a solid state amp? Uh, again, if. Um, if you bought this guitar and, and, you know, 
you don't have a tube amp, then this is going to be more of a realistic idea of what it will sound like. So of course you guys with your Dr. Z's and your Dumbles and your Brunos and all that stuff, if you remotely like the way it sounds through this little solid state 30 watt amp, then you know it's going to sound that much better through your rig at home. So here we go on the clean channel. Take it away, Will. Now we're going to do the neck and the middle together. just the middle by itself. All right, middle and bridge together. by itself. Okay. Um, so anyway, here you go, and uh, thanks for checking it out. Nice.